we are live. So, welcome to O4's The Forgotten Review and Thoughts film. I'm not sure anybody remembers this one. Irony? Coincidence? Usually when I prepare for these, I try to find YouTube videos discussing the movie. I want to see if I can learn something interesting about the movie from someone else's discussion of it. What I learned searching for YouTube videos for this one is that no one cares about it anymore. No one has put up anything other than trailers and clips. Well, I say no one cares. I care or I wouldn't be making this video. I realize this video is long, but if you're only interested in the review, that part of the video is fairly comparatively short. At least that's the idea. To see its length, check the time codes in the description box. So I start this video with a review essentially with zero spoilers. I say essentially because anytime I spoil something, before I do so, I will verbally let you know that I'm going to spoil something, and I'll be holding up an index finger until I'm done spoiling, so you can keep skipping ahead. You know, you can mute and skip ahead until you see me lower my index finger. And, let's see, I will not be spoiling anything else. Actually, yeah, I will not be spoiling anything without a specific warning that I'll be spoiling it. And, yeah, as soon as I end the review itself, please note the rest of the video will have lots of spoilers, including discussing the ending, and I will no longer be warning for any of it. Now, let's see. So, so, yeah. You know, I do sometimes review something that nobody by, but myself still cares about. And I'm not necessarily saying that I have some incredible new revelation to share about it. I'm reviewing it because I like reviewing it. This is something I wanted to review. And before I get into it, I'm, I'm going to be saying a lot of negatives about this. So I just wanted to make clear at least a few of the people who don't like this movie don't like the the fact that it plays so much that it places so much emphasis emphasis on the bond between parent and child and i don't personally i guess i would also say it, there's at least a little bit too much of that maybe but i do want to clarify i do think it is an extremely strong bond and i don't know if this was I, I would like to think we can do better than this, but I do think that there is at least one really, really good movie in exploring that bond, and it's possible that it does already exist, and I just am not aware of it, but it's not this one. Now, I, let's see, I am basing this on the theatrical cut, not the extended version. I my DVD is supposed to have both, but it wouldn't play the extended one. I am aware of the differences between the two, and I will talk about the differences in the section entitled Notes Taken Before Watching. And, you know, the, if you have a choice, the, ver the version to watch is the extended version. I have watched this either twice total or maybe three times total. Now, so, the plot. New York, Telly Peretta has been talking to a psychiatrist for 14 months to help deal with the grief of the, yeah, associated with losing her nine-year-old son, Sam, when a plane, do they say, something, something happened to the plane, let's go with that. And I found, you know, in, in reading reviews for this, I found a really excellent... So the, the website is called I for Film, and their review of this says, Grieving is an obsessive-compulsive disorder that alienates the sufferer from the rest of humanity. That is, yeah, beautiful, beautifully put. And, you know, it's, I also quite like the, the quote... What is grief, if not love, persevering? See, that's how you get through this film, by reminding you yourself that much better filmed entertainment exists. A huge part of the reason I'm doing this is because I think coping with grief is one of the most important things that... Yeah, it's, it's one of the most important things 
that we'll have to do at some point in our lives. And there are so few really, really good movies and video games and such that help us get through that process. And I find it extremely frustrating that this is such a bad example of something that helps. You know, if, if you are grieving, do not watch this movie. Watch... I, I, there's, there, I have a hard time coming up with movies that would be worse to watch if you are trying to get through the process of grieving. This is an absolutely terrible choice. And it, I'm, I'm not saying that because the first time I watched it, I was not expecting it to help with grieving. Anyway, yeah, so, you know, she's, she's in therapy, and then one day she, she wakes up, and everyone tells her that Sam never really existed, that she's deluded herself into thinking she had a son. So she tries to find evidence to prove that Sam existed, but the photo album is blank, the home videos are nothing but static, even the newspapers that are supposed to detail the plane trip have been altered. So she talks to Ash, a man whose daughter went missing. His daughter used to play with her son, and he's also being told that his daughter never existed. And gradually, they work themselves towards getting answers. So, this is a drama mystery sci-fi from 2004, directed by Joseph Rubin, Rubin sorry, who also directed The Stepfather, Sleeping with the Enemy, and The Good Son. Excuse me. And the, you know, the basic concept is to get some psychological horror out of the strong emotional bond between children and their parents. How scary it would be to lose your child, and then no one will help you to get them back. No one else will admit that they existed. And, oh, excuse me, I just break the thing for a second. Headache. Now, let's see. So, yeah, the, like I said, I don't offhand know of any movie that has done quite this kind of thing and done it well. Actually, I guess, yeah, no, never mind. I hadn't said that, but now I have. And yeah, so I, I, in these reviews, I like to get into, was this worth making? I think if they had thought of a better ending, maybe it would have been. And yeah, so, the IMDb sec, you know, more like this list, compared this to Flight Plan, Gothica, and Hide and Seek. And yeah, I mean, all four of these are movies that, you know, you could get some enjoyment out of, you know, as you're watching them, you're kind of wondering what the twist is going to turn out to be as we see the protagonist seemingly be gaslighted. And other than Gothica, the gaslighting is about the relationship with our child. and then when you see the twist, you you hadn't necessarily time watching the, the that particular movie at all, and you know I, th I think the invasion was also on the IMDb more like this list, and I yeah for for sure there's some similarities there, and overall flight plan is probably the best of them, although the invasion definitely has some good aspects, you know I've. I'm not sure there are very many people who are going to love hearing it, but for the invasion, you know, if you go back about half a century, then the original movie made about that same concept, you know, Invasion of the Body Snatchers, is better. I, I heard some say that the, there's a, there's, I haven't watched the other versions. I've only watched those two, but there's also one from the 90s and one from the 70s. I've heard those are also better than the 2007 one, but I can't myself speak to it. But anyway, let me just briefly say, Flight Plan I gave a 7 out of 10, Gothica 5 out of 10, Hide and Seek a 6 out of 10, The Invasion also a 6 out of 10. But yeah, if you're watching either Hide and Seek or The Invasion, I would go with The Invasion. 
I don't think it's wrong for movies to focus very much on a twist that they build towards. Let's see. You know, um, the movie Psycho, while problematic, does do a great job with its twist, even though a lot of. Yeah, even though a lot of people did not see it coming the first time they watched it, you know, today basically everybody knows what it was, but it was when it was made, it shocked people, and you can go back and rewatch that movie, and it lays the groundwork for the twist. The twist holds up to close scrutiny. I've watched that movie maybe a dozen times. I've looked very close. There is nothing in that movie that contradicts the twist. The twist is a satisfying one that wraps up the story and themes brilliantly, and it just, it's, it's stunning to me how bad this movie is at the, I'm, I'm not saying it's the, it's the exact same situation, but they do both have a central mystery that builds towards the, the twist ending, and yeah. Now, yeah, so personally, my favorite movie that is similar to this is Flight Plan. And that was a good movie even without the twist. The twist reveal, I remember it as being decent, and I cannot say that for the other movies that I listed. You know, other than maybe The Invasion and... Ah, I guess... Yeah, to be fair, brief spoilers for The Invasion. That one is a partial remake, so they did already have the twist ending figured out before they started writing the remake, and as such, could build... Yeah, anyway. No more spoilers for the animation anytime soon. Until the next time I won. And my least favorite movie that is similar to this is Gothica. Yes, I do think Gothica is worse than this movie. And, yeah. This movie, Forgotten, is nowhere near as good as flight plan, and yeah, hopefully that information will help you determine if one of them today will be particularly relevant to you, whether you're going to agree with me or not. If we're, if you are looking for the best movie about a young mother being gaslighted by her surroundings, if you want to go OG, for sure I recommend the original Rosemary's Baby. I cannot speak to the more recent, is, is there more than one? more recent version. I'm, I'm not entirely sure. You could also go for Darren Aronofsky's Mother. And yeah, so the, the subgenres of this of, uh, I guess, yeah, conspiracy. And see, so, yeah, you know, for the, the, the drama, mystery, and sci-fi elements are decent. I've I've seen worse for sure. A lot of people feel a strong fear of I guess yeah, I'll go with yeah. A lot of people feel a very strong fear of conspiracies and because of that it makes sense to make movies out of it but a lot of movies have trouble making sense out of this fear, giving a proper explanation for what's going on. And sadly, this one is another example of that. And while obviously the bond between mother and child is stronger than between father and child, given the whole nine months pregnancy thing, I do appreciate this movie acknowledges there is still a very strong bond between father and child. So, yeah, just, yeah, I've, I've already somewhat said, you know, the, actually, yeah, this, some of the stuff I already said about reading, I had forgotten I had written something down, so I'm just going to go through the following, even though a little bit of it is repeat information, apologies. Since I'm going to be criticizing this movie a lot, I want to say, I think movies that deal with grief are extremely important, and if this movie was a lot better, I would be praising it for that. I know some people might think that hating this movie means you don't care about grieving. As someone who believes that it is extremely important for media that depicts grief 
in a respectful way, since literally everyone will at some point grieve. You know, even the people who don't grieve, like a family member or loved, you know, lo loved one, maybe then it's a pet, you know. Basically, everyone will, ev will eventually grieve at some point in their life, and I find it... I, I love when I find a movie that does a great job of it, and, you know, I... Yeah, so a, a couple of brief... You know, I previously talked about the movie Don't Look Now, which does a great job. I guess... Hmm, is it technically a spoiler... I guess if you, hmm, yeah, hypothetically, if you if you know where the the quote, "What is grief if not love persevering?" If you know what that's from, then I probably don't want to tell you, but yeah, that is also a great piece of media that deals with grieving, and yeah, this movie. Is not. Now, let's see. So, yeah, this was written by Gerald DePego. I don't really know much else by him. Let's see, he, he wrote Phenomenon, the, the John Travolta movie, not the Dario Argento one. I remember that one being fine. Now, he wrote this movie around a disturbing dream he had, and unfortunately this movie is not the Terminator, where the film built around the dream imagery is amazing. I get why he thought the dream imagery itself would be really compelling, and yeah, I guess it's not really a spoiler, because it happens really early on. Yeah, basically the, the specific thing he dreamt was the visual of a loved one disappearing from images like like photographs and that's that happens extremely early in this one and yeah you know he had to, he wanted to i get why he thought that was compelling imagery i just i I think it would have made a lot more sense if this were an episode of Twilight Zone, or do they? St was there an Outer Limits show? Let's see. I mean, when this came out, wasn't there a Twilight Zone show? Or had been not too much further back, or something. But you know, that's not like in in Hollywood. If you have an idea. A lot of people would say, well, go right to the top, try to make a movie out of that idea, instead of just thinking, is the idea substantial enough for an entire movie? And in this case, no, it is not. Not even remote. Or actually, yeah, hypothetically, possibly, but the movie that he made out of it is not, does not have enough material to be a movie. It's, it's, full of filler. It is fillerful. And the, the, yeah, so I think if, if you, if this was, let's see, what is it, 42 minutes, I think, is what, you know, and then you have ads and then it comes to an hour, I think that would have been fine. And for sure, the, the twist, yeah, never mind. Let me, let me just, the twist would have been fine if it was a Twilight Zone episode. Now, at least once, the film writes itself into a corner, and so characters just kind of remember something randomly, instead of going back and rewriting the part where the writer wrote the film into a corner. I suppose maybe the idea is that they're, like, recovering their memories, but at least some of the time, these realizations are made by people who never forgot to begin with. So what is supposed to be the impetus for them remembering? And sometimes it's ridiculously important information. And if characters come too close to realizing the truth, something sudden will prevent them from discovering it. Once again, the writer wrote himself into a corner. Like, 
after a while, I got tired of counting all the things that slow them down from discovering the truth. Like, it's so obvious and straightforward that they, you know, they could have gotten to the bottom of it in an extremely short amount of time. But, you know, they're being chased, and, yeah. It's, I do appreciate that a lot of characters in this point out how obvious much more logical explanations for what's going on are. You know, you don't have to really... You know, that's that's the thing with, like... If, if, if person A is trying to convince person B that there's a conspiracy, if person B isn't... If, if person B doesn't have a predilection for believing in conspiracies, it might take a lot of hard work to break through to them and that's basically what we see here the most of the characters in this are not that eager to believe in conspiracies so they think of logical explanations for why it's not you know what what the answer is if it's not a conspiracy and yeah so <clears throat> I, I wrote a, you know, for the, yeah, for those who don't know, when I do these video reviews, I write, recently, I didn't always, but more recently, I will write down a bunch of notes of, excuse me, about what I want to say about the thing I'm reviewing. And one of the, yeah, so, you know, I have this long list of points that I want to make different aspects of the, the film that I want to talk about. And the one where I wrote credibility, I went ahead and wrote the following. And I think when I wrote it, I might have been thinking specifically of this movie. Is this perhaps one of the movies where the concept is something that is easy to make scary, funny, do action scenes around or the like, but when it comes to explaining it, it's never going to be as interesting as just seeing the concept play out? And does the explanation kind of ruin your enjoyment? And is it... Yeah, you know, and yeah, so at that... In front of that point, I just wrote, this is definitely exactly 100% one of those movies. It's... The, the idea of waking up one day and your, your child... I, I suppose I should briefly say, I'm not a parent. I never will be, but... I do appreciate that it is an extremely strong bond, and waking up one day and being told your child never existed would be horrifying, you know, but the, the, one of the problems is that this tries to take place largely in the real world, you know, it is an extreme event in a largely real world setting. It is not that the world we're seeing is so outlandish that this is the kind of thing that could happen. And that's what could have happened if they had made it as... I mean, they technically they could have done it for a movie as well, but it, it would have been completely, 100% understandable if it was an episode of The Twilight Zone. There are tons of episodes of The Twilight Zone where the world we're seeing, we may not realize it at the start of the episode, but later in the episode, we realize, no, this entire time, the world we've been seeing is, you no, know, bears very little resemblance to our own, you know, and ultimately, I think it would have been, yeah, I, th I think it would have made a lot of sense for this to be an episode of Twilight Zone and for the twist at the end to reveal that what we've been seeing while it appeared to be the real world, is not in fact the real world, it's something else. And because of that, these extreme events are explained by that. But yeah, so the, the, the twist. The twist is one of the worst in any movie I've ever seen. And you'll guess it very early on in watching a movie if you're at all trying. The movie is constantly hinting at the answer, and the hints are way too strong.
Now, the it is the right amount of twists. It's not difficult to keep up with the twist. You don't need to, like, look up answers. Apparently, some people thought they did, but they did understand it. It's just that one, once the twist does arrive, like, it's, it's very obvious what the twist is once, once you get all the information, but they don't come right out and say it, and because of that, some people mistakenly thought that they hadn't understood the twist. But, when, you know, they, they would go online and say, wait, is it really this and this? And people would say, yeah, it's that. That's, you're, you're right. So this was, let's see, yeah, so the direction, hmm, I mean, it does, yeah, it kind of goes back and forward between being focused and aimless. I mean, I suppose you could say it's, it's always focused, but what the focus is changes. It's not always focused on the plot. Once again, there there is not enough plot here for ninety minutes. It's you know you you could just barely make it work if it was like forty two minutes. But yeah, for for chunks of it, you know, it's not that the the direction all over is aimless, but the direction is only focused in the the tense and suspense scenes. Excuse me, my back is really. I think I, I might try to talk a little faster. Okay, so the, it was directed by Joseph Rubin, who directed... Sorry, I already said what he... Yeah, so Stepfather, Sleeping with the Enemy, The Good Son. I haven't watched any of these, but they are ones he's known for. You know, people who have watched these movies, you know... Yeah, if, if you told them he directed that, they would think, oh, you know, he did a good job on those. Yeah, like I said, he's directed nothing that I've watched other than this movie. But those three are psychological thrillers where something is very wrong with someone very close to the protagonist. So he does have, you know, it, it is a, it is a, uh, it is his type of, of the, you know, he's directed other movies as well, but those are three of, you know, yeah, those three, but not this one, are ones that, where people think, oh, he did a good job on that one. And I would definitely say the director understood how to, yeah. Now, the opening does a decent job of pretty quickly getting you up to date on because when the movie starts Sam is already dead you know we don't see it we, yeah we see flashbacks but when when the movie starts Sam is dead Telly is in therapy and gradually recovering you know it's been 14 months but she still has a really hard time letting go of Sam and yeah the opening does a, a good job, like, basically plunging us into that. We, like, within just the first few minutes, you understand this is something she is not able to let go of. This is something, and, and that's also, like, if you, if the first several minutes of it, if, if, yeah, if the first several minutes of it make you feel like, okay, this is a bit much, I don't think you're going to really like them. Un unless you can basically keep, you know, cope with that. You know, if you, if you like some of the other, I, I could understand, you know, watching this and not caring about the, the grief aspect, but getting into the, the you know, action scenes, the, the chase scenes. But you definitely, like, it's... There's, there's not really any, you can't say that, there's no such thing as grieving wrong. Everyone grieves in, in their own way. Everyone grieves in different, different ways, at different paces. I have seen some say that they didn't think anybody would still be grieving a full 14-month 
months after, and they're entitled to their opinion. I'm not saying, you know, they're not like bad people or something. I do think that, uh, yeah, but the movie lays its cards on the table. And that, uh, you know, that sucks if you didn't realize the movie was going to be that, it was going to go that, uh, was going to take that kind of a plunge into the grief. And you don't like, you know, you know, yeah, if you watch this in theaters, you, you know, you, you pretty quickly know you were in for a really long movie if, but, but, yeah. It, it does a good job of getting you into, like, let's see, there's not really anything that's extremely important to know about this movie that you don't find out very, very early in the movie. The, the, the chasing doesn't happen immediately, but once the, uh, I guess, hmm. yeah, I'm not going to give away exactly when the chasing starts, but there, there is chasing in this movie, and it doesn't start right away, because once they start, they kind of have to keep going, but other than that, Basically everything you need to know is in the first several minutes of, of the movie. It doesn't take long to get going or anything. Now the ending, I'm not going to give away whether it's a happy ending or a sad ending. But as far as does it fit with what came before, does it wrap things up, you know, it is wildly unsatisfying. It, nowhere, it comes nowhere near close to wrapping up all the loose ends. It barely explains why it's an ending. It, it's almost like the movie just kind of stops abruptly. In a, in, let's see, I guess two weeks from now, I think. I, th I think it's two weeks from now. I will be doing a video talking about the movie Red Eye from 2005. I swear I'm not going to let this video, t t you know, just become me praising that movie. I'm going to do an entire video praising that movie in a few weeks, you know, probably talking about it for over an hour, as these videos tend to get long. Anyway, that movie also has multiple things to resolve, but it does a great job of resolving all of it. And in fact, that movie is shorter than this one, and where this is very padded, that one isn't. I will go ahead and just very briefly talk about... So, so yeah. Spoiling the ending, so if you don't want to know the ending to this movie, mute, skip ahead until you see me lower my index finger. Okay. The ending of this movie sees Telly and Ash have their children back. But we don't know what happened to the, you know, all the other people who disappeared. We don't know if aliens are still experimenting on human beings. And these are things that could have been covered in just a few minutes, like literally just... Once you see that the those kids are back, you could very quickly just have the couple of people who went missing over the course of the movie also, like, you know, the movie it ends at, a, what's it called, a playground full of kids. You could so easily have had just briefly the camera pan over and it shows there are the people who d disappeared over the course of the movie. You don't have to give them lines or anything. You can just, you know, maybe they, like, do a quick nod and towards Telly and she nods back or something. And then briefly have one of the aliens say, we'll, we'll never... Actually, yeah, just, you know, have it be something like, you people are making the, these experiments unbearable for us. We will find another planet and never bother you again. And that would be it. But they don't. Maybe the writer just didn't realize that that would be necessary for a satisfying exclusion. Maybe he didn't think that Telly would care. And honestly, she doesn't appear to. Perhaps most damning, it is possible that he also didn't think that the audience would care. As long as the protagonist has her kid back, nothing else matters. No more spoilers for this movie, for the time being. Now, I wouldn't really say it loses your interest along the way. You're too invested and you too badly want an answer. I will say I did find my way, find my mind wandering in a lot of the action scenes because it really is like, 
It is not impossible to convey plot and character through an action scene. It's not. And I, I'm pretty sure there had been at least some by 2004 that did it. I, I believe so. Actually, yeah, yeah, there definitely were. And they could have done that here, but they didn't. They just didn't. There is, like, every so often, someone will show up and chase the, you know, Ash and Telly. There'll be some, you know, yeah, something like that. And then for, uh, yeah, for the next little while, you know, sometimes it's just a few minutes. The plot isn't going to have any development at all. And it just, like, hypothetically, if you recut this, if you removed all of the chase scenes, this movie would be significantly shorter. And ultimately, like, yeah, it's the, the, the actual mystery is so... It's, it's not actually that complex or complicated. It's just that it takes them for ever to make any progress and part of that is all the chasing now let's see the so some people say that the movie is pro-life I guess I mean I guess they're saying that because the movie puts emphasis on how, you know, if you give birth, if you are a biological parent, the, you know, you, you will have a very strong connection to the, the child that you gave birth to. But that's not really, that doesn't fly in the face of pro-choice. Pro-choice isn't saying that children don't matter to biological parents. They're just... You know, I can say quite clearly, as one of countless advocates for the pro-choice movement, we're not against babies. We don't think that there isn't a bond between a biological parent and a biological child. We're just saying no one should be forced into it. But, yeah, I don't know, like, I, I get... If you want to say that you think it's a good thing that it does, but the term pro-life specifically refers to people who don't think abortion should be legal. Like, I really don't see, and and you know, I'll I'll say, this is what I always say when when someone, me personally, I think it would make a lot more sense for those who call themselves pro-life to refer to themselves as anti-choice because that's what they are. They are not for life, they are against the choice of abortion or no abortion. If you were if you want to refer to yourself as pro-life, then you should care about whether the baby has a happy life, not just about whether or not it's brought to term. If you, you know, if you call yourself pro-life, you should be fighting to make sure that the people who would usually have an adoption, abortion, you know, people who are afraid they can't afford to give the baby a good life, if you fight to make sure that they do have that money so they don't even want to have the abortion, then, by all means, call yourself pro-life. But if you aren't in favor of that, you're anti-choice, you're not pro-life. So, let's see. Hmm. I mean, yeah, I basically already said that. So, the Julianne Moore plays Telly Peretta. She spends a lot of the movie in mama bear mode, she is way too talented for what this movie deserves. In at least one of the DV extras, she basically copped to that she wanted to do a thriller movie where she'd get to run around, be chased and such. Which, honestly, I don't blame her for. It's fun. I've done it myself. I just, you know, in minor productions. I just wish she'd chosen a better script to do that with. 
The very first thing we see of her, she's sitting alone on one of the swings in the playground, and it's also like blue and gray underlining the loneliness and the loss. So it's a good, strong introduction to her character that now that she has lost her son, she can't really move on. And again, that so, some people, when I say the term, the, the words, cannot move on some people to some people that is inherently negatively loaded that means there's something wrong with the person that they can't move on i'm using it neutrally i'm using it to describe the fact that she's having trouble moving on i'm not saying there's something wrong with having trouble moving on it really like She's way too talented for this movie, and I, yeah, you know, they, she felt like, she, she liked the idea of getting to do this kind of movie, and she just didn't, anyway, so, let's see, yeah, you know, like, there's, there's, she's also in Children of Men, which also has some, like, chasing and such, but it's a much more intelligent movie, so I kind of wish she just waited for, excuse me, there's no need for her to have, to attach her name to, to a movie this bad. Children of Men is an infinitely better movie than this. Now, let's see, but then, you know, she also did Next and Hannibal, so, I mean, yeah, she, she, I don't know, I suppose, some of Hannibal could be called intelligent, and she, I forget, I think I did read once, but I could imagine she thought, you know, she, she really loved the first movie, and I'm not going to be talking much about The Sons of the Lambs. I think, ah, let me think, it was Lindsay Ellis, who re fairly recently, a couple of weeks ago by now, did an excellent video talking about how problematic the movie is, so... Everything I'd have to say about the movie she said in that video about the problematic aspect. Anyway, but yeah, you know, there's there's some intelligent psychology going on in that movie, and that you know when when one second, huh? I can't remember her name. I'm sorry. The original Chloe Starling who played Jodie Foster. That's it. I was thinking Josie, but no, Jodie Foster. She passed on Hannibal. Perhaps she read the script. And, you know, yeah, Julianne Moore was like, I I want that. It's probably as smart as the first one. And anyway, let's see. But yeah, you know, other than, you know, she's in movies like Magnolia, which is a very intelligent movie and very, like, I guess I should. Yeah, I, I don't feel qualified to talk about that movie. Excuse me. To me, one of the main things that I think of her as is Marlene from The Hand That Rocks the Cradle. And if you haven't watched that movie, I mean, I guess it's not for everyone, but yeah, it's 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 hard for me to to tell you more, tell anyone that they shouldn't watch that movie. I guess not everybody should. But yeah, watch that movie, especially watch her scenes in it, because it's it is wild. Anyway. And yeah, Dominic West as Ash. His villain roles are incredibly memorable. He's fine in this. For some of it, he is literally constantly drunk and or drinking. Because when handling characterization, why be subtle when you can bludgeon the audience with it? Like, he's constantly drinking and or drunk. She's constantly talking about Sam. There's no other... Yeah. Now, let's see. I, I always forget, yeah. Dominic West is in 28 Days. Not 28 Days Later, but 28 Days. And The Phantom Menace. Huh. As Pal's guard. Okay, so yeah, he probably wasn't that easy to pick out, because he's not Tanaka, I'm almost, oops, 
Obviously, he's not Panaka. Yeah, sorry, brain fart. That Panaka's black. For those who don't remember the Phantom Menace, you know, if you haven't watched it ten million times, like I, there, there was a while where I watched the movie. You know, last time I watched the prequel trilogy, I thought they were meh to bad, but I used to actually really like the Phantom Menace when I was, you know, a kid. I really loved the Phantom Menace, but yeah. So I was trying to go go over in my mind, but I can't offhand think. I think I what I meant to say was I can't remember Panaka talking to him and Captain Panaka of the Royal Palace Guard. I am going into way too much detail. Nobody else cares. I'm going to move on. So when it comes to the, the kids... The missing children are seen in flashbacks, which are, of course, always of cute, sometimes downright adorable behavior, positive memories. Somehow in movies like this, they never remember the times their kid made them really frustrated about something. I'm, I'm not saying that, you know, I get you, you have a stronger memory of the positives, but just it, it feels so, so silly and so candy-coated, sugar-coated Hollywood to only, I, I don't think we ever see a negative thing. A, a child do a negative thing in this entire movie. And I just feel like, it, imagine if actually the some of the memories were ones where like, if, if Sam actually, you know, actually did something that made Telly frustrated and she yelled at him and then she saw how he was suddenly afraid of her that would actually make the movie more powerful. Then she'd be like, I can't believe, you know, I, I never got a chance to apologize to him for yelling at him. But no, the movie, everything has to be completely black and white. It makes the movie so much more boring. And there are definitely too many flashbacks and they are way too frequent. You'd think the filmmakers were terrified the audience would be like most characters in this and forget about them. Now, Gary Sinise plays Dr. Jack Muntz. His interactions with Telly convey that a lot of people snap at their therapist because early on it does feel painful to open up to a therapist. What does that say? Right. This, in spite of the fact that, with notable exceptions, Therapists are trying to help their patients, and sometimes that cannot be done without causing at least a little pain. The pain isn't the goal, it's a side effect, but like when, when someone asks us to think about something that causes us pain, we, you know, instinctively we try to push that away and maybe lash out at the person telling us to think about it. But if we do go in and really think about it, we can gradually get, you know, yeah, get better. Sadly, this one does also do the thing where it, it kind of seems like the, the movie itself doesn't have a very high opinion of therapists. Now, let's see if I... I guess that... Is every one. Yeah, so there's definitely there are definitely times where the actor some of the actors are overdoing it, looking overly serious and impassioned. And the dialogue can get really awkward. There are way too many utterances of where's my son and similar now, the, yeah, several of the characters in this are very one note, defined by their grief or their role in trying to slow down uh, Telly and Ash, that kind of thing. Now, as far as cinematography, there is a lot of, like, handheld, and there's some scenes where they use a lot of close-ups, you know, to convey intensity, 
if you're not a big fan of handheld, it's definitely going to bother you in this movie. Now, yeah, some some spoilers about the filming of this. The camera will pass over people, making it very easy to figure out that it's aliens, and there are other angles that makes it feel like they're being watched. Even the opening shots are of the camera flying over the city. Now, obviously, what they did was use a helicopter, but from right away, it really looks like we're getting the POV of aliens flying UFOs. It just, it gives it away immediately. Actually, yeah, I don't know what it is with with major American movies that sometimes give away their twist in the opening, the, like the opening credit sequence. And I can't really give other examples without spoiling those movies, but yeah. No more spoilers for the time being. The editing really keeps you in the moment, whether it's a sad montage or a fast-paced action scene. And, let's see... Yeah, so there's some... Um, I guess I shouldn't go too much into detail, but... there, Yeah, so there are some special effects in this, and they manage to make them largely subtle, and... Yeah, they, they don't take over the movie. And the stunts also have the right amount and are, you know, convincing. And, let's see, yeah, the production design is, is good. You get a sense of how important their children were to Telly and Ash when you see their bedrooms. And, yeah, so the, the movie features various parts of New York City and some that, you know, that aren't deep in the city itself. Now, let's see. And the, yeah, so the action is tense, suspenseful, fast, and gritty. The amount of action feels excessive for the subject matter, and considering the mystery, the movie, you know, yeah, it, it seems like the, the mystery is the main point of the movie, I don't know if they were maybe worried people would lose interest or if they felt they had to since they had the budget for a lot of action, but a huge amount of the movie is devoted to just scenes of people chasing Ash and Telly and they should have made it less and it should have been more spaced out. Now. The movie has a few jump scares, and I'm not sure why so many reviewers bring that up as if it's some kind of incredible, impossible feat. Like, startling someone is easy. It's scaring them on a deeper level. That's what takes skill. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that all jump scares are... I'm, I'm not saying jump scares are bad, but some jump scares, cheap jump scares, are easy to do. You know, I'm, I'm not saying no more jump scares ever. There are some incredible jump scares in the first two Aliens movies, for example. Alien and Aliens, great jump scares. The Shining, great jump scares, you know, but the... Ah, do those qualify as jump scares? Whatever. But in this, it's just, yeah, like, it reminds me of, you know, Randy Marsh running around... With, with the, the handheld camera, uh, you know, talking about, I'm so startled. Now, and I do think that jump scares are more effective if once they've happened, you can still logically understand how they made sense. It's not difficult to jump scare someone if you don't have to play by the rules. Now, let's see, so, yeah, the, let's see, the, the movie is, you know, you're supposed to be extremely emotionally invested in 
Telly's pain, Ash's pain, and because the movie hits that note so hard, they get to be kind of annoying at times. You know, I already mentioned that they're completely defined by that one trait, and I really think it would have made a lot of sense to have just... There are characters that have, you know, other things going on than just the main mystery, even in mystery-driven movies, you know, I guess maybe this is when the drinking game should start, take a shot every time I, you know, bring up the Matt Damon, the Born Identity, and say that it handles something better than the movie I'm reviewing. But yeah, that movie is about him trying to figure out who he, who he is. He, he has amnesia, and that movie does manage to fit in other things than just, it, you know, he's not constantly saying, who am I? I need to find out who I am. There are other things, and just, yeah, it, it wouldn't have been difficult to do with this movie. You know, as it is, Ash and Telly basically have fairly different interests and backgrounds and so the you know it's it's basically it, it yeah it gives a little bit of development to their their backgrounds like that but if you had made actually to be fair there is a tiny bit tiny bit of time where they talk about the their different backgrounds and how it how it's made them who they are but there could have been so much more of that in the movie, and it would have made the movie much more memorable because they're essentially stick figures. Like the, yeah. Now, yeah. So the the scenes were easy to follow, you know. Other than, like, you know, some of the some of the chasing can get a little disorienting because the handheld camera. But other than that. It's easy to follow, it's meant to follow, it's easy to follow, and I agree with that decision. You know, the mystery drives a lot of the movie, so it's smart of them to make the mystery basically the only thing that it's not, it's not easy to immediately follow and pick up on. Now, some of the score can be very loud and aggressive. There's some sometimes some very sinister stuff, kind of, kind of mystery, and other times it sounds like something out of a horror movie. And, let's see, there's a little bit of comedy in this, like, some uh, jokes about the differences between men and women, psychiatrist jokes, such. The movie does not have a lot of strong violence or sex. The tone is overly serious. It's very Lifetime movie, sci-fi channel movie. Many people say this is similar to, it, it, it feels like you're watching an X-Files episode. I haven't watched that show, but apparently the movie Final Destination started out as an X-Files episode and then was turned into a movie instead, and I get that, because that's the kind of thing, you know, that movie, unlike this one, makes a lot of sense to pump a lot of money into and make it feature length. I get the arguments against it. I'm not making any excuses. Not, well, not a single excuse made about any of the sequels. Not, you will, you will, I'm definitely not going to be making any excuses today. But that first movie has a lot going for it. You know, yeah, I, I love that first movie. I, I only watched the, the second, you know, I didn't watch any other sequels than, than the, the first sequel, the second movie. I did not want to keep going after that, and apparently the movies get much, much worse after that one. But anyway, I could imagine that this... Yeah, that's another thing. I think it would have made a lot of sense for this to be an X-Files episode. I think that would have made a lot of the negative things in this would have worked much better in that format. But basically, the movie starts out as this is just the real world, and then the conspiracy stuff comes up, and it's just, it doesn't work as well 
as the yeah and with with twilight zone and or x-files you immediately have there's going to be something that's not going to be you know that can't happen in the real world and let's see. a lot of the time the realism is there's a high level of realism now nah. but you know there there are a couple of major things where you really need to suspend disbelief i'm not saying that a movie is bad just because it's not realistic i'm not saying this movie is bad because of the things about it that are not realistic if they if they were just handled better it's not the fact that they're unrealistic excuse me now the oh right sorry since we're still dealing with corona you know i just wanted to warn you i i you know yeah i touch my face sometimes in these videos since, since we're still dealing with corona i just want to assure you i am very careful to wash my hands before and after going outside and and you know live up to to you know social distancing and mask wearing and all that now the, the movie keeps to a pretty good pace throughout now let's see. as long as you care about the mystery it's never really boring but obviously you might end up feeling like it's too silly especially as you learn more about the answers to the mystery and the answers immediately fall apart at even the tiniest bit of scrutiny you have to give this movie an extreme amount of suspension of disbelief for it to not completely fall apart once you get the answers. Honestly, in some ways, this movie is like an episode of a TV show. Like, it's, you know, th things will go really, go by really fast. Like, they're afraid people will change the channel and an ad break. And. Now, the the movie is 91 minutes. Some people say that this movie wasted two and a half hours of their lives. I mean, I guess, I guess if they, if it's like the trip to the movie theater and they're counting like previews and such, but other than that, anyway, if you get into it, you'll definitely feel like watching all the way through, but if you do, you'll very likely end up very disappointed by the twist ending. I'm aware not everyone was. And, yeah, you know, I usually say if you're not inter interested 30 minutes in, the movie probably isn't going to be your kind of thing. For this one, I'd maybe say 40 minutes. Now, in, in some of the chase scenes, it can end up feeling much longer than it actually is. And... Huh, yeah, I actually I made a note that's, you know, is it maybe advisable to watch it with someone who knows which parts to fast forward through? I think I made that note from, like, the, the Shaft, the, the Killer Elevator movie. Anyway the the yeah for this one it's not difficult to know what you know it, when an action scene starts you might as well fast forward because nothing's really gonna nothing interesting is gonna happen before the end of it anyway now i've always really loved science fiction movies chase thrillers and movies where people are worried about the safety of family members so this really should be right up my alley it is fairly generic, and let's see. Yeah, so I also sometimes talk about if the movie is offensive or not. If you are grieving, avoid this. There are some aspects of this movie that are very disrespectful to people who are grieving. And let's see. So the yeah, the best scene and or element. For a lot of it, there's a decent pace to it, and it does keep your interest as to what the answer to the mystery might be. And, yeah, so the worst 
aspect is the, the twist ending and for these I try to think of is there any way to avoid prepare for a better deal with the worst aspect I can't really think of anything though. I, I mean if you're the kind of person who finds that an, a movie can be ruined by a bad ending I 100% understand what you you know how you feel and I would say that's true of this movie so you know if you're the kind of person that feels that way definitely don't watch this movie I do, there, there are some movies that I love, even though the ending isn't, you know, other people have said of that ending that it ruins the movie for them. Now, yeah, so some people say the ending comes out of nowhere, others say they could see the end coming from far away. I have kind of always thought it was extremely obvious where the movie is going. I, I guess if this is the first movie you watch the deals with that idea then it might be difficult but other than that I'm not saying you're stupid I honestly I think you're more likely to just be insecure like you think is it really that it's you know some, sometimes we'll, we'll see right through something and we'll feel bad like we ruined something you know we, we shouldn't feel bad it's the filmmakers who should have done a better job now let's see. Yeah, so the thing I was most worried about was being unhappy with the twist ending, and it was worse than I thought it would be, or even could be. So, yeah, the reason that the reason that I watched this the first time was that this was part of a buy two movies for the price of one deal. The other movie was Gattaca. And I already knew that I loved Gattaca, so I wanted that one on DVD. And then, you know, once I owned this one, I figured, I guess I'll watch it, whatever. And, yeah, so I, I didn't have a lot of expectations when I first watched it. And, you know, I would say that it's probably, you know, maybe it was the only way they felt they could say sell The Forgotten to anyone. But then I'm not sure that it's not the other way around, that Gattaca wasn't that well-received. I will be doing a video on that one, but it will probably be a while. <clears throat> now, let's see. A lot of the way through, the movie is entertaining to watch. As a whole, it is definitely not a good movie, though. If the idea of your kid going missing is something that scares you and you'd like to work through that fear using a movie, this movie will do that job fine. The trailer does give at least a little bit too much away. And, you know, if you do watch it, definitely try not to figure out the twist from the trailers unless you want to know going in. Now, the cover and posters do not give too much away. And they give you a decent enough idea. You know, if you like the cover or poster, you might like the movie. The movie doesn't really have a lot of metaphors or difficult to understand elements. You don't need to watch it more than once. You know, I, I know some people would say, well, obviously not. Well, you know, there are some movies that, like, the first time I showed one of my friends Videodrome, like, I, I think he had heard that it's about people dying in relation to, like, you know, TV something and so he thought it would be extremely obvious and easy and we watched it and the movie ran the started running the end credits and he turned to face me and said what was even going on for a lot of that you know so it's not just because it might sound simple that movie is not simple you do have to really think about for it to start making sense this movie like other than other than it not spelling out the twist the yeah, anyway, and let's see, there are some movies that really shouldn't work, but somehow they do, for, you know, a reason that might be interesting to get into, this movie doesn't work, even though it's, you know, I, th I think maybe the, the writer and director thought they made it work, even though, anyway, on the tomato meter, this has 32%, and the user is, is 36. And yeah, I, that's that's pretty accurate. Yeah, 
And Meta, it has a 43 out of 100 on for the critics, but a 6.9 out of 10 for users. I, I figure it's because the people who did like the movie bothered to log on to Metacritic and vote it up, and a lot of the people who didn't like it did not do that. The IMDb rating is 5.8 out of 10, and yeah, that's also, that's a pretty accurate. There are people who love this movie, there are people who vote 10. Now, ultimately, this movie leaves you feeling unfulfilled and empty. It's like eating snacks when you're actually hungry for food. And, yeah, so I guess... So, as far as rating goes, ultimately, I am giving this... Yeah, I'm giving this six mysteriously missing children out of ten. And that was it for the spoiler-free section. So, spoilers from here on out. This is the start of the thoughts section of the movie. Disclaimers. If you don't care about these disclaimers, I'll try to keep them short and relevant, but your mileage may vary. You can skip right ahead to the section of your choice in the description box. I often try to talk very fast during the disclaimers, since a lot of this is very standard information. I'm not going to keep speaking as fast as I sometimes do during the section, once I get into the video itself. With that said, please do note that some of the specific discussion of the movie may be in this section. I realize the video is long, I'm going to do what I can to make it worth your time. So, from here on out, spoilers. I'm not going to be warning before I spoil this movie. If I spoil something else, I will continue to warn and hold up an index finger. Let's see. So, yeah, this video is not going to contain any clips of any kind. The most visual it gets is when I sometimes act something out. So, feel free to watch something visual, such as clips from the subject, in another tab. I won't mind. Let's see. So, yeah, content warning and or trigger warning. I am going to be discussing the potentially triggering content of this movie, including gaslighting, grief, alcoholism, and mental illness. Now, in case I do talk about violence in this, I don't have a problem with violence horror in general. The thing is, one of my favorite horror movies and movies in general, I also love Cronenberg, The Fly, Video Drone, etc. And I don't have a problem with film, sexuality, nudity, disturbing, upsetting material in general. Monsters are one of my favorite movies. I might swear a little in this video, probably roughly as much as there is in the movie itself. Now, since I got this on sale, anything they would say is not out of bitterness. I do not feel like the movie wasted my time. Nobody forced me to watch it or to make this video. It's not that I'm upset about how this compares to other movies like it. I don't have some personal vendetta against anyone who worked on making it. To the best of my ability, the negative things I said in this are fair criticisms based on budget, when it came out, what I was trying to achieve, etc. Instead of me quoting all the lines from this movie, let me just say here, I think you can pr probably figure out, I, th I think I pretty much hated all the, the quotes that they put in the MGB memorable quote section. I like that they called it memorable quotes. They didn't call it quotes you love. You know, it's uh, it's possible that the people who inputted them, input them at you know, also think they're terrible lines. But yeah, you can just look up the the quote section instead of me sitting here quoting all of them. Now let's see. that brings us to the rest of this video is not a review, it's a series of, well, thoughts, some of this analysis, some of this MC3, rip tags, and other jokes, especially in the, in the first thoughts section, or, yeah, the very next section, thoughts that I had while watching, chronological order, you can think of this a running commentary, live tweet, or like, and the section after that is thoughts that I had before watching, including what I had to say about DVD specials, and let's see. 
yeah, and the final section is, I, I get into stuff I think it's worthwhile to get into, on Rotten Tomatoes, the Metacritic, MVP, and Wikipedia. Now, let's see. This brings us... Let's see. Does the movie appear to have empathy for the least likable characters? I mean... The least likable character is probably Linus Roach. Hmm. Excuse me. I guess it... Hmm. I don't think it is, yeah, and, you know, he is supposed to be one of those people we really love to hate, and for that he's fine, you know, I, th I think they dipped way too much into, like, they, they took some traits from Terminators, you know, he can take bullets and just walk, you can run him over, he'll just get back up, and, you know, the, this kind of, like, neutral face he doesn't look like super evil when he's doing and saying evil things and such yeah i i don't think i'm i'm not saying they should have had the you know his face appear like the stereotypical gray the whole movie but i i really don't think that the the terminator traits made that the, there was at least some where they even used some of the some music that sounded very terminator Anyway, let's see. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to talk at least a little fast. My back is really weak. Let's see. I will say it does a decent job of not overexposing the threat. You know, Linus Roach is not. Let's see. He's not in so many scenes that you end up not caring about, you know, he makes an impression every time he appears. Now, let's see, the... So yeah, I, I watched this in 2007. And... Yeah, so like I said, I've watched it two or three times. The first time I watched it was 2007. And the most recent time I watched it was right before hitting record. So it would be fresh in my mind. But I don't remember if I've seen it between those two. So that is... Yeah, that was it for this section. Which brings us to the next section. Notes taken while watching. A lot of the things I have to say about the start I already put in the review itself. So the first note I have is when Linus Roach tells Telly where she left the car. Thanks. And why do we lose our car? So we can learn to, learn to find it again. Okay, so the first several minutes of the movie do a decent job of conveying that apparently Telly is having trouble with memory. The car, the coffee... taking the car to get coffee, driving the car too fast, spilling coffee in the car, having to go back to get new coffee for the, the ride back for the car, driving the car to somewhere where you can clean the coffee out of the car. Speaking of psychotics, okay, I get that that's like a mother-in-law joke, but the movie does have a little bit of a misogynist streak. Like, we're constantly having these jokes about Ash thinks Telly is being really judgmental because of the drinking. What have you done, Jim? You're gonna have to be more specific. He does a lot of awful things. I'm here to meet fellow swingers. I mean, I guess if you get extremely drunk, maybe the, the part of you that can judge whether or not a joke is funny dies but then what's the screenwriter's excuse i'm kidding 
he was definitely drunk while writing this. There's your plane. Now be a good little boy and prove to mommy that you paid close attention in flight school. Look, I'm just saying some planes are so simple to fly that a kid could fly it. Could a kid fly it? Of course not. Ah, that didn't work quite as well as the original, uh, which I was referencing. Anyway, so the handheld camera kind of goes nuts when Telly's trying to watch the home videos. And it's hard to get a close-up when the gal won't stay in place. Everyone remembers Sam. And at Sam's, everyone knows your name. We have a million photographs and hundreds of thousands of receipts for film. Maybe we're a little overboard. I don't know. You drinking? Honestly, never mind that I asked. There isn't enough liquor on the planet for you after I'm done drinking. Did we get married? Did I wake up married and not remember the wedding because I was so drunk? Why does this keep happening to me? And, you know, Telly tears off the wallpaper and, you know, he points out, someone lived here before me. They papered over this room. And, you know, this was when I noted for the view, I do appreciate that a lot of characters in this point out some obvious, much more logical explanations for what's going on. Say her name. Now look at the walls again. I didn't say Simon Says. They say I dreamt it all. Do you think I dreamt it? No, I think you were 100% correct. That's why I called the cops on you. That's just how I respond to people telling me the truth. Maybe I need therapy to deal with that. So about half an hour into the 90 minute running time, the, the like, you know, running and chasing starts. And I'm not saying that's waiting too long. In fact, considering just how much there is, you know, maybe they should have had started that kind of thing later, or at least they should have spaced it out better. I mean, I didn't literally time it, but the movie, like, from one action scene ending to the next starting, it's not that much screen time. Telly outruns the agents and stands with her back against the wall. What have I saw, gotten myself into? I really should have read the script. And then she looks up to the sky, and we clearly see clouds revealing an otherwise invisible UFO. Obviously, the answer is aliens. It's just, like, it's, it's baffling to me that they didn't think this was giving it away. Once again, this is about a third into the movie. It's less than halfway into the movie. And they basically just, like, they, hypothetically, if they had, like, one of those... Uh, what are they called? If if they in the movie had had one of those planes that write things in the sky, literally right in this movie on screen on camera, this movie is about aliens. It still wouldn't have been more obvious than it is from the way they handle the the cloud thing. I was hoping you'd come here. Me too. To be honest, I never know exactly where I'm going to end up when I start drinking. I don't understand. Well, it'll be easier if I get behind you and then give you a quick push to... Oh, you're not talking about swing. Do you ever feel like somebody's watching you and you've got no privacy? 38 minutes in and Telly's talking about abduction and talking about who could possibly be behind this. I will grant that the car accident is a bit of a jolt, but if you think about it for two seconds, it makes no sense. How could the agents in the car possibly know exactly when the two, you know, when 
yeah, when Telly and Ash would be passing by, you know, so that they could time it exactly right to hit their car, it would have been made, it would have made much more sense if they had somehow made, like, if they had guessed where they were going and then, like, set up a blockade or they hit the car from ahead, you know, call me a goddamn snob if you want, but I do think the jump scares are more effective if once they've happened, you can still understand how they made sense. It's not that difficult to jump scare if you don't play by the rules. I know, I said that in the review itself, it bears repeating. I mean, literally, the only reason it happens the way it happens in the movie is because they wanted to jolt the audience and they wanted to force the characters out of their car. That's it. And if they were driving directly at each other, it would have been harder, to, you know, then either it's like, well, how could they not tell that the other one was, you know, they would either like swerve or something. And if they, if they only block their path, then it's not as exciting for them to just stop the car and get out. But yeah, it, it's just, let's see. Doctor, there are people after us. What do you mean? We're we're moving from from point A to point B. They're behind us, and they're trying to catch up to us. Is that simple enough? Simple enough? Do I need to dumb it down a shade? I wish you wouldn't do that. Look, lady, you have grief. I have alcoholism. No one here is allowed more than one character trait. Okay. When Telly was trying to wake up Ash, she slapped him on the ass, like, three times. I mean, I'm sure if you're into guys, Dominic West is considered attractive, but I don't think you two are there yet. What the hell are you doing, you nut job? If you wanted someone to wake you up without giving you pneumonia, you should have asked Peter. <laughs> that actually does fit, because she was in some of those movies. And, yeah, you know, when when Linus Roach is refusing to move from in front of their car, the music briefly sounds like something out of the Terminator. I love the Terminator, but it's pretty ridiculous that this movie should resemble it in any way. They barely even look back after running him over. Holy crap. Maybe that's why they took your kids. You ran someone over, and they took away your kids just to be safe and then they erased your memory. They took our kids and our dog. You guys need new material. It is mighty rich for the screenwriter of this movie to be saying that someone else needs new material. Children? There are no children. Then how does our species reproduce, Einstein? Ash does start to sober up, get back on the wagon, start counting steps. And he starts emptying a liquor bottle like he's Bart Simpson hoping to earn money by returning empty canisters of drinks. I'm Dr. Muntz. What did Telly tell you to tell me on the telly? And Ash you know, so so they're yeah they're they're questioning a Pitalis. Pit Pitalis. He's like, what is what does a Pitalis stand for? And Ash hits him, and then he says, Al. If Ash is gonna have to hit him for every single letter, he is, you know, for for every single letter that Al is going to give up, he is going to end up in a freaking coma. I kind of wish that they had gone with that, like. That, that would have been just, yeah, yeah, actually, or maybe like a game of charades and every, like, like yeah, like, like, a, a hangman, yeah, like, every, you know, they, they, he, he says how many letters to the word, and then they write it out, and then they guess letters, and every, you know, every time that it's the, the right one, they hit him or something, it's just, yeah. And Telly 
relates to Al about his children, and evidently he cares more about his children than his kneecaps. And, you know, Telly leans in close, and she and Al start whispering, What is your favorite color? Blue. No, yellow. Ah! And Telly remembers the name of the airplane company, so they go looking for information. I mean, so I talked about this in the review, that they'll suddenly remember really important information. If you're looking for what happened with... Why wouldn't you go there immediately anyway? Like, it's... It's, it's, it's baffling how, how... Like, this is... The reason they don't immediately go look into the airplane is because the movie would be much shorter. You know, it's like, it's, it's, anyway. I mean, I feel like if my kid disappeared on a plane and I've, and I've been having trouble grieving and processing for 14 months, I feel like I could probably tell you the name of the airplane company in my sleep with my hand tied behind my back. Telly is very clever getting information out of the woman in the, the Quest Air building, and I wish that this is, this is, I swear, I'm not gonna make everything about Red Eye, but that movie immediately sets up. Our protagonist is clever, and throughout the movie, she is clever, you know, but here, I mean, this, isn't this basically the only time? I'm not saying she's, like, stupid, but... She, yeah, the rest of the time, she's just constantly focusing on Sam, and, like, blindly... Yeah, because she, like, she makes mistakes be because of how driven she is to find him. The, like, she should have... She should have been, you know... I mean, she's she harasses Ash to the point where he calls the cops on her. You know, that's... Yeah. So, despite the several times that, you know, Telly has interacted with Linus Roach, it's only now, you know, right, right around the time that the black cop catches up to Ash and Telly, it's only now that she remembers that apparently Linus Roach was there at the plane that, that Sam and Lauren went on. I'm, I mean... She even, she apparently saw him, like, what's, what's it called, R rustle the hair, I'm not going to do it to myself, but the, the, yeah, you know, how, how adults will sometimes, yeah, you know, r rustle up his hair and, and smiles at him, and then he walks up, and, and Linus Roach looks directly at Tully, and she didn't recognize him for all of that time. I mean, I don't know, is the implication supposed to be that her dreams are, like, changing? And now she thinks she saw Linus Roach there? She doesn't mention it to Ash. That guy who's been following us, I saw him in my dream. I, I, it's, it's baffling to me. It's like, it's like the writer just kept... I would believe you if you told me that the writer, when when he sat down to start writing this, that he had, that someone had dared him to not go back and change anything, and to write. Let, let's you know, let's be, let's be, uh, let's see, that he had to write at least one word every ten minutes. No longer breaks than that. And then he had to sit down and write until he was all the way done with writing the script. And he couldn't go back and erase anything. I would believe you if you told me that that was how this was written. Because it's like, why, why doesn't he just go back and establish these things earlier on? You know, it's, 
It's just, it's, it's so nonsensical. Anyway. You know, yeah, if, if this, if she didn't only just now remember this, if it had been there before, you know, you would think it was one of the first things she thought of, because she saw him at the, you know, he helped her find her car, and I guess the next time they encountered him, you know, I don't even remember, it's, it's wonderful, the movie's already leaving my memory, even though it hasn't been that long since I watched it, anyway, and yeah, Linus and Ash fall out of the window, and one of them goes flying off, the other just isn't there when she checked the ground. And there's at least one extra who just walks past not noticing. There's glass on the ground. You're not going to notice that at all. I mean, I get that they're not, they don't want to attract attention. They want us to focus on Telly, who's seeing that no one landed there. But it's like, you wouldn't at least, wouldn't you at least be careful to walk around the glass? Anyway. And the, the doctor drives to the airport and then explains, you know, they can't prevent the aliens from the experiments. They can just minimize, min minimize? Mini mouse. They can mini mouse the amount of collateral damage. And Telly spots Sam and he goes off running because nothing in this movie can happen without chasing. And, yeah, here near the very end, it's all but confirmed that Linus Roach can essentially teleport in this movie. Like, he, you know, he and Telly are next to each other. Then she sees Sam, so she chases him, and suddenly he's in front of her. You know, he, he grabs her by the throat, and we again have a very terminator -y moment. Given that, since, you know, seemingly all he wants is for Telly to forget. So why didn't he teleport into a situation where he could catch her much sooner than here at the end? You know, he has appeared to almost know where she was going before. But, you know, basically, the only reason he didn't is because then the movie would be over. And Linus Roach gets pulled into the air. Telly goes to her home and then the playground. And after showering... Sam's name a few times, she finds him, and yeah, so, so yeah, right before Linus Roach is pulled into the air, he says something like, I can, I can fix it, or give me another chance, something like that, and I get that the idea is supposed to be that this is the end of at least this experiment, but the movie, you know, like I said briefly in the spoiler section of the review itself, the move, you know, the ending doesn't actually say that they're gonna, they're not still gonna do some experiments on them, and this is where, if it was an X Files episode or a Twilight Zone episode, that would have been fine, you know. I, I haven't watched, I don't think any X Files. I don't have a problem with it. I haven't been avoiding it. It's just, you know, I haven't watched it. It's not, and and the, but but apparently that show will sometimes have open-ended mysteries and certainly there is a sort of sense that their you know aliens are real in that show and they might be watching they might be doing experiments so this would have made perfect sense for you know was the x-files on air I'm, I'm almost certain either x-files are or the the twilight zone was a twilight zone at, you know show around this time there was no reason to turn this into a movie. There was not enough material. And, yeah, basically everything else about that I already said in the spoiler section of the review. I'm talking about the ending. So, if you don't count the end credits, the movie is an hour, 26 minutes, and 33 seconds long. And with them, it's 91 minutes. That is it for this section. So, next section is notes taken before watching excuse me uh, 
I am scrolling and in a few seconds I will be to where I can read the... There we go. So... Yeah, so, you know, ultimately it's too little of a proper answer in the end. You know, the... You know, the... the that's basically they're, you know... Yeah, they're trying to learn about the, the bond and, you know, seeing if it could be dissolved. And, you know, I've, I've seen... I'm not the first to point out, you know, the, ah, what's it called? Linus Roach says, you know, if I, I'm, I'm being held accountable, and if I can't remove the bond with you, then the experiment is a failure. As, you know, I'm not the first to point out, that doesn't mean the experiment is a failure. That just, it means you, your conclusion was, you know, different than, like, for, for the experiment to be a failure, you basically have to lose all the tests off it or something. Then it's a failure. If he cannot, if, if he ultimately cannot dissolve the bond, then the, then the experiment was a, let's see, I guess technically not a success, but he, ah, what's the word? Like, he, you know, that's still, that's something to, to work from. You know, what he, he could, he, you know, his result would be, you know, these are the things he tried, and ultimately he was unable to remove the bond. But that's not the same thing as the experiment just straight up being a complete failure. You know, the, the, yeah. but, but a lot of people, if you, I have had a little bit of training in the, you know, I, I tried to take the education to become a lab worker once, and there isn't really such a thing as a failed experiment. If if you know if you were able to carry out the experiment, then either you got the result you expected to, or you got a different result. In either case, you note the result you got, and you know you write out why you got the result you got. But your experiment isn't a failure just because you set out to remove something and then the, the result was you not being able to remove it. That, yeah, so, so, but a lot of people think of it as, you know, as, as like, a, a, ah, what's it called? Like, like basically winning an, um, an Olympic medal, you know. Either you do or you don't. There is no in between. But when it comes to scientific experiments, it's not just pass fail. There is such a thing as, you know, I, I carried out things that I thought would get result A, but instead I got result B. This is my reasoning for why I only got result B, despite hoping for result A. Now, let's see, so, so, yeah, you know, the aliens, it seems like they're not going to keep experimenting on the, on the bond, and it doesn't sequel bait, but it, it barely wraps up, like, the only thing here at the end is, she has her kid back, Lauren is back, and Ash is back, and Ash doesn't seem to remember her, I would find that kind of, that's that's kind of messed up. I, I don't know why she's so okay with that. You know, she's like, oh, you know, the, the my name is Telly, and, and he says, my name is Ash, and it's just like, is is he a clone? Did did he survive the fall, and now they erased his memory? It's just there's there's a lot of things that yeah. And let's see. 
So yeah, since the movie's about alien abduction, we expect at least a little footage of aliens. I do think that Linus Roach's face briefly turning into a gray is decent looking. Like, if you showed that clip to someone who didn't know that it was supposed to be about aliens, if he knew what an alien gray looked like, he would be able to tell that's what they were going for. And let's see. So yeah, I'm I'm just fairly in I I will fairly fairly soon be getting into the differences between the theatrical ending and the alternate ending. But for now, I'm yeah, I will briefly say. I know the following will leave some people say I'm taking me too seriously. But as someone who believes that it is extremely important for media that depicts grief in a respectful way, since literally everyone will at some point grieve over a family member or and or pet dying, I really wish this movie that starts out being about a woman grieving didn't eventually turn out to be to bring back the person she was grieving. The idea that the person you're grieving isn't really gone and you can get them back. You just have to go through something extreme first slows down the grieving process. Basically, as long as you watch things like this, we will be stuck in bargaining and denial on the five stages of grief model. It is extremely unhealthy to use this kind of thing as comfort food if you are actually grieving. There are way too many pieces of media that do this sort of thing now. Obviously, if I give examples, I will be spoiling those stories since usually it is a twist. And it is especially messed up considering that this is a movie about grieving, you know, lost loved ones who died in connection with the plane. It came out, you know, not extremely long after 9-11, where thousands did die and thousands had to try to grieve them. Movies like this are extremely unhealthy for situations like this. And the thing is, this movie didn't have to do such a bad job dealing with grieving. Imagine if instead of it being about a grieving mother told that her son never existed, it was a kidnapping, and then she was told her son never existed. And then when she gets her son back at the end, it isn't doing a disservice to grieving, because we never thought that the kid, you know, like, basically, when you watch this movie, we don't really believe that the kid never existed. We just think that something is making people think that he didn't exist. You know, because when the movie starts, she's clearly, completely convinced that he did exist and he was alive. The movie doesn't start after the memories, you know, the after the physical pieces of evidence of the memories have been adjusted, you know. Now, let's see. Yeah, so the movie Flight Plan, the kid is alive at the start. I'm going to briefly spoil Flight Plan. I will admit it has been years. I, I think that might have been 2007 also that I watched that one. And that one I only had watched once. If I recall, by the end of the movie, she has her kid back. Even though for a chunk of it, people are saying that her kid didn't, you know, they didn't see her bring a kid onto the plane, you know. But, yeah, so... At the start of it, we see the kid alive. At the end of it, she gets the kid back alive. So it the, the grieving process didn't start yet. We were waiting for her to get her kid back alive. So, yeah, no more spoilers for, for Flight Plan. But, yeah, I made my point for that. So, yeah, if you really badly want for there to be therapy early on, make her a helicopter parent or something. Like, she needs to learn not to constantly be focusing on her son. It's not healthy for her or for her son. And then once the, the kid, you know, see me, yeah. And then you have the, the, the kidnapping, and then she goes to therapy. The, let's see. I guess what you'd have to make it is that when the kid was kidnapped, they didn't get a ransom demand. And now it's been 14 months since the day he was kidnapped and she you know and, the, and her therapist is saying you're not going to see him again when when this long has passed 
between the the kid being kidnapped and the parent being reunited with the kid, it usually means the kid is dead and she refuses and then the let's see. Yeah, and, and then, you know, after that she wakes up and the physical evidence of that she ever had a kid are gone. Is gone. In, yeah, is gone, I think. One of the deleted scenes has like rom you know, a little bit of romance between Telly and, and Ash. I mean she had a husband and he's not even in the like after he doesn't recognize her, we don't even see him again. Not in, not in in the theatrical ending, not in the alternate ending. And it's like I don't think he was in on the secret. He seemed to legitimately believe, you know. Yeah, yeah, and people who were in on the secret didn't end up losing their memories. They just didn't Yeah, so so anyway. There for a while I was surprised to find that a lot of the people who said that this movie sucked didn't you know use the, the sky vacuum effect as reference you know like they didn't say this movie sucks as much as it sucks as hard as how the as the the sky vacuum in the movie sucks people up into the air you know that kind of thing some of the critics sort of make that joke but yeah I didn't it was surprising to me how many people didn't because they did usually say this movie sucks like it would be one thing if they said you know this movie is crap then you can't you know but this movie sucks you know sky vacuum yeah I'm not saying that it would have looked better if they had you know we, we all know exactly what you know the the Simpsons added once for example one of the one of the holiday uh, Halloween Treehouse of Horror episodes, you know, has someone on The Simpsons being abducted, and you, know, you see the UFO come in, and you see, like, this, uh, what's it called, like, a cylindrical beam of light, you know, and slowly it pulls the thing up into the, the UFO. I'm not saying that I think that would have been perfect for this movie, but it still is just, it looks silly. It looks, yeah. And I am aware that I'm not the first person to draw a comparison between that, the, the sky vacuum, and then the, uh, you know, the scene in Monty no, Python and the Holy Grail. So ultimately, the movie is about aliens experimenting on humans. In this movie, they don't stick probes up the characters' butts, but watching it certainly feels like they stuck them up the audience members' butts. So this movie taps into the anxiety there is for Americans and some people from the rest of the world as well for their police and national agencies as well as psychiatric hospitals and personnel. It, you know, there, there is this kind of strange complicated relationship that many Americans have with these three. To an average American, if they see someone they don't like approached by cops, feds, psychiatrists, you know, one or more of those, they assume that they're just doing their job and it's in fact protecting you from the dangerous people but if an average American hears that cops, fans, or psychiatrists are looking for them then they think they're going to be abused by them, possibly even killed. Obviously neither of these feelings are completely 100% unreasonable there are countless cases of both happening but it is messed up to tap into that anxiety for something as frivolous as an alien abduction story. If you're gonna tap into that anxiety you really should explore ideas like how both the both of the Judge Dredd movies explore that sometimes law enforcement is necessary and saves lives, stops killers, but other times they abuse their authority and makes things worse. I'm not saying that this movie caused it on its own, but the fact that there are so many Hollywood movies that take advantage of that fear, it helps normalize the idea that the government is out to get you, and that's something that has made this pandemic so much worse than it had to be. So, yeah, briefly going to talk spoilers about The Sixth Sense. In that movie, in the end, it turns out 
you know, Bruce Willis' character was in denial. He did not admit to himself that he had died and was now a ghost. I think this movie would work better if the ending revealed that Telly actually was in denial. And... Yeah, I, that's it for spoilers round. Yeah, let's say that in this movie, Telly was revealed to be in denial. I think it would have worked much better. And one of, the, one of the single biggest problems with this movie is what the choice turns out to be. So I'm not, I'm, and I'm not going to claim that I'm sure I can actually think of an answer that is satisfying. I mean, if it wasn't aliens, then what? The experiment was done by, let's say, the NSA. It was an experiment, but it was being done. Then why was it being done? You know, my suggestion is she's in denial. Maybe she accidentally killed her son. Now she's trying to cope with that by inventing someone else who had killed her son. So after a really long time of Telly being unable to move on, other characters start to pretend that she never had a son to begin with because they figure it'll just be too painful. And, you know, they, they believe eventually she will realize that she did kill her own son. There are other movies who have done similar, but obviously I cannot mention which ones without spoiling those. So let me just say that at least one of the other movies that have, that have done this twist I hold in extremely high regard. Now, let's see. Yeah, so others have already pointed out. I will briefly bring up some of the major problems with the twist. If the aliens can listen and watch everything with the experiment and immediately pull you out of this, you know, pull you into the sky, if the, you know, why don't they pull Al Patalis? You know, like the moment that Telly and Ash capture him, it would make sense to, to pull him away because he knows, you know, or, or is it that they're only paying attention to what, you know, Ash and Telly themselves are hearing and so they didn't know about Al until they started talking to him, in which case, why does it take Linus Roach so long to get to Ash and Telly? And let's see. Yeah, it just, and, you know, if they have the technology to alter pictures and remove physical evidence of children, why can't they do more than simply put new wallpaper over the old wallpaper in Ash's daughter's room? Honestly, I feel like they should just have established something that the aliens couldn't affect. Maybe instead of removing the kids, they replace them with ones that are secretly aliens, but they can't read the minds of the original children or their parents, so there are things that are writ that are not written down anywhere for them to learn about, you know, about how the family relate to one another, and that's how Telly is able to realize it. And then she talks to Ash, and she keeps prodding, are you sure that everything is exactly the same between you and your daughter? And after a while, he starts to admit, yeah, there actually is something wrong. Something she never used to do, you know, I don't know, she, she never used to hum Beatles songs while doing her homework. You know, she never did it even once before, but now she does it all the time. You know, okay, for this, I might in part be inspired by the movie Changeling, directed by Clint Eastwood, starring Angelina Jolie. It's amazing. It's an infinity. Eh. I'll get there eventually. An infinitely better exploration of the bond between parent and child than this movie is. If, if you're watching this this video... And you're, you know, you're looking for a movie that really does a great job exploring how strong that bond is. Yeah, I would say that. And, and you know, people trying to, you know, not, not respecting that. You know, that, that kind of thing would be, let's see. Yeah, so, so, you know, the, the. Actually, yeah, I guess that is, if they can remove the memories of the children existing from the minds of everyone except Telly and ultimately Ash, you know, they, they can even remove them from Telly's husband. Why don't any of the other parents remember? What makes Telly special? And again, you could answer this. Right. You could answer this, the movie just doesn't bother you. Off the top of my head, my answer if I were rewriting this movie script 
is that the test is only being done to Tally and Ash. All the other parents, including Tally's husband and Ash's wife, have had their memory scrubbed because the experiment is only being done on Tally and Ash. In fact, maybe the experiment should be if they will continue believing they had children, even if everyone around them is com completely convinced that they didn't. And and then you know, yeah, you have the evidence that's been removed or altered. As it is, the movie just does not explain why no other parents do remember. I mean, I suppose the real answer is because they want the movie to be about Telly and to a lesser extent Ash, and it's the kind of thing that you really do need to explain in a film like this. The film simply only works as a whole if you're completely married to the reveal of the twist. Now, if it works for you, that's great. I'm not trying to take that away from you, but I do think we need to keep calling these things out. Otherwise, Hollywood is simply going to keep peddling stupid twists. And honestly, I think I can come up with more examples of bad twists in movies than good ones. Whether off the top of my head or me taking a lot of time to really try to think of them all. Especially, you know, more when, when you know, when it comes to more good movies that deal with grief, because it is an extremely important subject. Let's see, and... But, but yeah, you know, there at the end, we don't even know for a fact if the other children were returned. The, the movie never even tells us who they are. And, and again, let's say that they really badly wanted the movie to be about how ten different kids went missing. Okay, show all ten of them briefly, and then the rest of the flashbacks are only Sam and Telly. And then there at the end, when, you know, she hugs Sam, then Sam goes back, and all ten of them are standing there. It's, I'm, I didn't even write that one down. I came up with that off, the, right now, off the top of my head. This is not that difficult, people. It's just, the writer is not very good at, at this, at, at least with this movie. I've, I, I don't remember about Phenomenon, and again, I haven't watched anything else he's written, but for this, it's not, you, you didn't have to write it like this. You really, really didn't. You know, and, and if, you, if you need, like, okay, so the, the reason that, you know, in, in the movie itself, as it is, I forget, ten kids, I, I think it's around, two, let's, let's go with ten for the, for the sake of, you know, ten kids went missing. It was because all of them went on a plane, and then I, I don't even remember. Did the plane disappear, or was it something else? Anyway. So, so yeah, you know, obviously, if you need it to only be about two kids, it can't be a plane full of kids. But, let's say that it was... Let's see. Yes. Again, I'm sorry, but I'm coming up with this off the top of my head. And I've never written a... Not written. I haven't written a, a feature length script. Anyway, the the and no, you will almost definitely never see any of the scripts I've written. Anyway, the the yeah, so the Yes. If you need it to only be about Telly and Ash and Sam and Lauren, had it be that Sam you know, again, let's, you know, earlier I said that the movie would be better if there was at least one thing where Telly, you know, yelled at Sam and then she felt bad. And now she misses him because she never got to apologize for that. Let's say, hmm, excuse me, the reason, you know, the place where, the, where Sam and, and Lauren disappeared was a hospital. So... You know, Sam was Sam was doing something that Telly had told him, don't do that, it's really dangerous. He did something, maybe maybe like, uh, maybe, he, maybe he was riding his bike in a place that was, uh, you know, where, where there was dangerous stuff on the road or something. He got hurt, and so she runs over to help him, and, you know, she tells him, I told you not to to ride your bike here. Why don't you listen to me? And she and and then she realizes she you know that she scared him and and you know she maybe tries to apologize 
but he's he's a little scared of her now, and so you know she she takes him in the car and drives to to the hospital, and like let's see if maybe yeah, and the way to get Lauren in is she was there. She, maybe, I don't know, maybe she was watching, maybe they take turns riding on the bike, and he wanted to show off for Lauren, so he drove it somewhere that Telly had told him not to. Lauren, seeing the, the you know, the injury, she's like, can I please come with you to, to the hospital? I, I want to, I want to make sure he's okay. And, you know, so, so Telly is like, I have to talk to... I have to talk to your dad about that. So, you know, she gets, she, she calls Ash. Like I said, the movie's already, I'm already starting to forget the movie. She calls Ash, who's nearby, and says, you know, Sam got hurt. Lauren, you know, really, really wants to go to the hospital with him. You know, is, is that okay with you? And he says, I, I'm, I'm I'm gonna go I'm gonna go with you. You know, I, I care that much about Sam. He wouldn't say it exactly like that, but that's he would say something that conveys, you know if if Sam's going to the hospital, I'm going with him, something like that. And so all four of them get in the car, drive. I guess maybe it should be like the emergency room. Yeah, so you know, drive there, so she goes up to the the front, you know, yeah, she has him checked in and everything. And they're told, you have to stay out here and wait. You know, this is... And, and so they, they get out there. One second. This thing is... Oh, never mind. So they go out there and wait. And, you know, after... Yeah, so, so after a while, they feel... You know, so, real quick. Lauren gets to stay. You know, she's maybe she's like in, in tears. She's like, I... I have to. I have to know he's okay. So, so you know the you know, doctor, or nurse, or something looks at you know, asks you know, tells tells Telly. We'll we'll take good care of both of them. Don't worry. You can wait outside, but we really need to to isolate. You know, so it's just the two kids in the emergency room. So Sam, sorry, not Sam, Ash, Telly, and Ash sit there, and you know maybe they're trying to. Think of, think of something else, so they start talking about something, and then they realize they have something in common, and then that could be used for the rest of the movie. Or even if you insist on them having, you know, things not in common, like the movie does, you know, maybe he starts talking about, you know, he, he's like, I haven't been this scared since the that hockey game in, you know, 94 or something. And she's like... This is making me just as scared as, you know, well, she was like an editor or something. You know, so she relates it to, to fear there, you know. And then after a while, you know, maybe, yeah, maybe the doctor or the nurse tells them, you will, you know, we'll, we'll get back to you with a message in an hour or something, you know. And so they've been there for, like, just over an hour. Maybe they give an hour and five minutes or ten minutes or something. And they're like, I mean, they should... We should have heard by now, and so one of them walks up to the front desk and says, I got here a little over an hour ago, you know, I'm, you know, my, my kid is Sam, and, you know, Lauren is with Sam, and, you know, they, they make sure to spell the name exactly, and the, the young woman, you know, checks the computer, and she's like, we've never had anyone by that name in, in here, and there, you know, that's, that's, at that point, you can then have, you know, the rest of the movie be this thing of, you know, th then you don't have to worry about any other children and the, yeah, actually, I think the movie would be a lot better if the movie started like that and then for the rest of it, you know, the, yeah, get rid of all the chase scenes and just have the rest of it be like a mystery, uh, you know, a, a movie of the of Ash and Telly gradually uncovering the mystery and have them be much more smart about it have them like something as obvious as checking the the company the the you know or quest air the the you know that should be like the first step not something they do so late in the movie anyway
now let's see. and the movie doesn't actually say whether or not Tully had her memories erased. I mean, she's not even surprised. She doesn't seem to just suddenly remember. She just always remembers. You know, even Ash had his memories erased. So I guess the they tried and it just didn't work. Because it never, yeah, she didn't wake up and not remember him. So, so yeah, the, you know, I, I guess the idea is supposed to be Actually, you know what? I don't even remember. No, I think I think Linus Roach heavily implied that he did erase everyone's memories. You know, Jack Munz and maybe Al Patalis were some of the only ones who knew. Once Ash is able to remember he had a kid, Tully poses the question, if there were never any children, how could two p different people remember their kids? I guess we're supposed to ignore that them having been in a cult and they've since undergone some deprogramming is a much more credible answer to that question. No, clearly there's a conspiracy and aliens are abducting human beings. You know, like, just, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, at the very end, the, let's see, yeah, actually, I mean, in the, yeah, so the alternate ending at the, the airline's building, the, you know, Telly is able to see Sam, and she tries to walk over to him, but is unable to, I'll get into why, very, very soon. And the, let's see, so that was the, in, in the theatrical cut, nothing actually, you know, she, she goes to the, the airline building and then the, yeah, and then, then Linus Roach is yanked into the air. So, I'll, I guess an argument can be made that it, Excuse me, that it didn't really matter. But if you go by the alternate ending, it did matter that they could get to the, the airline. Why, like, let's see. I think the idea in the alternate ending is supposed to be that the only reason she can see Sam is that, like, I mean, I don't think it's supposed to be that he's actually there in front of her. I think it's supposed to be that it it's like he's there in front of her. But anyway, yeah, like the... the let's see. Hmm. It just, you know, hypothetically... Why not make it, if, if they're, let's see, I guess maybe they're, they're, maybe they did try to delete, to, to remove the, the details of the airline name from Telly's memory, but like Sam himself, she, she, ha she held on to that memory. So I guess that is a decent enough, although at that point it's like, they should have just moved to a different, you know, it, it just, it's, sometimes the movie feels like it was written by two different people who didn't agree on whether or not there should be aliens. One of them thought that it should be an incredibly inept conspiracy where if you remember the name of the airline, then going to the building that they had, you know, that's, that's it, that's all you have to do. You know, the, the, a huge piece of the puzzle is there, you know, and the other person thought, no, 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 al it's aliens, they can yeet people into the sky, they can, like, remove physical evidence, they can delete people's memories, because it does, you can't have both, it doesn't make any sense. 
for just I get that it's difficult to do a mystery when the people who are trying to keep the mystery secret are able to do almost everything, you know, almost anything you think of, but then don't make it so they can do almost anything you could think of. Like, let's hypothetically, again, I think the movie would be a lot stronger if, if it was something similar to, you know, instead of the kids going missing, they come back different. You know, the... Actually, yeah, you could have that... You you could use the, the emergency room thing and then have the kids come back. You know, so, yeah, after about an hour, they, they come out and the kids come back. And at first, Telly's just like, well, you know, it's the trauma. That's why he's a little different, but it keeps being different. And, you know, the... the so so yeah, it's so so the kids are basically clones, and they actually yeah maybe they specifically the information they used for the clones is based on the information that's that they wrote the telly wrote for the like filling out the ah what's it called filling out the form to get the yeah to to have him. Do, do that, does, is that how it is in American hospitals? I don't live in America. I've, I've been there, but not in a hospital, thank, thankfully. The, the, didn't have any reason to go to a hospital. The, the, but, but yeah, I'm, you know, if that isn't how it is, let's, let's go with, you know, maybe, maybe it's the kind of hospital that has to do, you know, and maybe the, yeah, so everything about clone Sam is based on what Telly wrote. And maybe Telly would always write, like, let's see, when, you know, like, maybe every time Telly writes Sam's name, she would do, like, a, a fancy, like, kind of snake for the, for the S. And, you know, that was something she did, but he didn't. And now, when she gets him back, whenever he writes his name, he writes it like that. And, you know, so, so you have a, a thing, you know, something like that, but, yeah. Let's see. And at the end, it's not actually confirmed that the people who were sucked into the sky were returned. You know, Telly doesn't care about Alfred Woodard, the cop. A and Pope, I think, is the character's name. And again, she could, she could have been there at the, at the park. You know, with, uh, let's see, who else was, Al, Al Patalis, you know, and, let's see, I guess, Linus Roach himself, it would be fine for him to not be, you know, and, and, and when Telly finds Sam at the children's playground, he doesn't seem to realize that any time has passed. Does that mean that she was put back in time by 14 months? And she just remembers what has happened in those 14 months. I don't doubt. She clearly remembers. She's not confused. Or did the aliens go around and remind every single person who knew about his existence that he existed? And was he, like, what does he think has happened for the last 14 months? Or has he been, like, in a coma or something? It just, and it would have been so easy. It would have been so easy. Just have it be the the way I see it. Let's say I I I think the idea of them rewinding, you know, time travel or something like that. I I think that's a little, you know, a li little bit out there. But they hypothetically, let's say that the. I mean, I I know that the the filmmakers wanted it to end with him on the playground. If that is, I I think. I think it would make more sense if they're, you know, once they get to the airline building, you know, there's just, like, yeah, one, yeah, once they get to the airline building, it's not, that's not where they needed to go, but, you know, Linus Roach is like, you know what, I give up. You, you, everything I throw your way, you're always, you know, so, you know what, other than me telling you where to go next, you would never in a million years guess it. So I'm just going to tell you, 
because you you know clearly you've you've proven I cannot make you forget your child, and so he takes her to the real place, and like let's see, let's say something like it's been fourteen months. I figure what would probably be the least traumatic would be if the kid had been in an environment that he liked being in, but he is also okay with going back, you know, and yeah, so, you know, she finds him, and he's, like, playing, he's, he's getting enough to eat, he's, you know, he's living healthy, all these things, and so she, you know, she, she goes, you know, and, and he does become overwhelmed with emotion, and runs up, and hugs her, you know, the, like, they hug each other as hard as she hugs him, you know, in the, in the ending here, when she finds him at the playground, and let's see then you have the excuse me and the you know yeah so so when they 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 hug and then Linus Roach walks up to them and says we did what we could to make sure he was you know we we took good care of him and, you know, for a second, Telly looks at him with, like, suspicion. And so she she locks eyes with with Sam to, to like, see, you know, does does he agree with that? And and Sam is basically like, that's, that's true. But you shouldn't have taken me away. But you, you know, I guess you did the best you could. You know, considering, or something like that. And then they go home and... You know, and maybe also actually show the father happy to be reunited with Sam since, you know, I mean, I, I guess by the ending of the movie, we're supposed to have forgotten that he was away from his son for 14 months, too. It's not like he didn't care. He, you know, he, he had, I, th I think basically we're supposed to take that as far as grieving goes, he had reached acceptance by the time the movie starts, by the time the events of the movie start, you know, but it's not like he never cared about Sam, and I do think they did a decent enough job of setting that up. I didn't get the sense that he just didn't care about Sam. I got the sense that he had, you know, he had managed to, to reach acceptance, but, you know, and so some people do, some people don't, you know, but the, ah, let me think. Yeah, I, th I think, you know, some, something like that. And, and if it absolutely 100% does have to be the, the ah, what's it called? Yeah, if you badly want it to be that they're at the, the playground, then have it be that, you know, once Sam realizes that Telly is there, he runs up to her, they hug, and, like, he whispers to her, Something like, they told me that I would get you back, but I didn't believe them until just now when I saw you. And just have a very brief conversation, you know, did, did they feed you? Yes. You know, I mean, you can, you can even have like, like a, a joke, you know, uh, did they feed you? Nothing but marshmallows. And she'd be like, and he'd be like, Gotcha, you know, but yeah, you know the the fact that's the you know there are several other children that were on the plane that's supposed to crash makes it really strange and kind of disturbing that Telly and Ash never tried to talk to their parents, you know, and it's like if you want to say oh but they don't remember well, Ash didn't remember before Telly came and woke him back up. You know, if he could be woken back up, why couldn't they? And again, you know, it would have been super easy to fix this, as I've already detailed. I'm guessing that is one of the reasons why the movie Flight Plan only has the one child instead of a group of children. And to be fair, this movie came out before Flight Plan. And, you know, I can imagine that maybe Flight Plan, you know, took some notes, you know, they, they actually learned a lot from this. It taught them what not to do, you know, but no, it's just...
they could e th this could have been a much much better movie now so I guess the idea let's see so the Yeah, so the aliens can yank you into the sky, and I guess the idea for why they don't do it to the parents who are remembering is that they're testing them. And, you know, then why not completely get rid of... Yeah, you know, for example, Al, why not get rid of him before he has a chance to talk to... You know, I mean, he does manage to tell, you know, the, the truth wouldn't fit in your head. Now, let's see. There's another thing. Yeah, so, let's see, why did the aliens leave the photo album and the home video, video but make them blank? You know, the, the, I get why they left the picture that used to have all three of them, but now only has Telly and her husband since there is still something in the picture, but why not just simply completely remove the photo album and home video if they're so desperate to keep her from realizing she used to have a kid? Hypothetically say that the tape and photo album were purchased back when she was pregnant before she supposedly had a miscarriage, why would you not th just throw those away? It's supposed to have been nine years since she had the miscarriage. I guess the idea is supposed to be that if she just can't find them, then that's you know then she would think, oh, so they're they're somewhere else. But if she sees them and she can recognize them as being, you know, I think it says Sam on the on the video tape, you know, which. If you watch this movie today, you might not even remember VHS tapes, but, you know, I guess that's supposed to be the idea, but it is still kind of a silly, yeah. Now, let's see. Yeah, so the only thing I could find online, you know, I, I found some clips, which I don't watch those, and I found, sorry, on YouTube, and I found, the, you know, the, the teaser trailer and the regular trailer, they're on the DVD, so I watch them on the DVD, so I'll, yeah, I will now be talking about the DVD stuff. So there's a commentary by director Joseph Luton and writer Gerald Pango, and that's right, yeah, I, I took notes from that, and everything that, you know, yeah, everything I have to say about it, I put in the review itself, and yeah, so the... Yeah, the teaser isn't half bad. It's very flashy editing, so it kind of fits. And the... Let's see. Yeah, so the, the trailer itself... Yeah, just really quickly. The, the teaser is 1 minute 40. Trailer is 2 minutes 32 seconds. Yeah, the, the trailer does a, a decent you know, job. And, you know, Ash says, We have never met. I do not know you. Or how to use contractions. And yeah, both of these show the alien abduction effect. I mean, that pretty much tells you that it's about aliens. Nobody else pulls people into the sky like that. I don't know, is it supposed to be like invisible Spider Man using his invisible web to pull it into Wonder Woman's invisible jet? I don't know. And yeah, so. There's some DVD special features, including Remembering the Forgotten, which is 20 minutes. The writer describes the stream that inspired the film. One of the people working on the movie would worry that the sky abduction would look silly, and it does, but apparently audiences liked it. And one of them says a thriller either works or it doesn't. And I pretty much already said I don't think it did. And then there's On the Set, The Making of the Forgotten which is 14 minutes, 17 seconds, and a really bland 
generic name for a for a featurette or whatever. And yeah, it it has this text that says something terrifying is happening. Terrible movies are being made by talented people. You should know better. It's a pretty good featurette. The actors sell it well. Dominic was scared of doing this physical stuff, but ended up loving it. And I yeah, I didn't note who said this, but someone said, "What we think are real and what is real, many people can." experience the same thing and remember it completely differently and someone talks about paramnesia where people create an imaginary life for themselves which is what uh, you know months dr jack months says that telly has so deleted scenes 12 minutes and 47 seconds worth yeah so the first one is the alternate ending so yeah in the in the uh what's it called airport building you know this is, I th let's see, I guess this is after she chases Sam for a while. This is instead of him, instead of Linus Roach grabbing her by the throat as she's chasing after Sam, she, you know, she gets to a role, opens the door, and Sam is in there, and it looks just like his room. I'm, I'm going to try to be fairly specific in how I describe this, because I'm not sure you can watch the alternate ending anywhere other than the DVD. I, I'm... If, I, if it is online, I haven't found it, and maybe I haven't looked in the right way, but I didn't find it, so I'm going to try to paint a picture for you if you only watch the, the theatrical ending. Yeah, she opens the door. It's Sam's room, which you know we saw at the start of the film when she was in there, and yeah, he's in there, and it's like it's, it's very vivid light, lighting and colors. Yeah, he's in there. She can't get to him. As, as she tries to walk closer, she's getting these electrical shocks, and it, it's clearly painful, but she continues to crawl slowly closer and closer to him, and Linus says Sam can't hear her or see her, and, you know, they wanted to see if they could dissolve her memories, and it seems like she is forgetting, and she spends maybe a minute trying to fight through the electricity, and Linus Roach tells her, Telly, stop. You don't have to die. So she collapses, and then he asks her, who was that boy? And I wasn't one her. I, I think it's that she can't remember. Maybe she's pretending, but she, you know, she says, I don't know, or something. I can't remember. And then she starts to remember. She flashes back to the pregnancy. And Linus Roach says she'll be the only one to remember. He isn't pulled into the air like in the theatrical ending. And then, you know, more or less the rest of it is the same. Except it spends a little more time. In the theatrical ending, you know, she runs home. And it almost immediately goes to her at the, uh, the playground. In the, in the alternate, she runs into his room. And he's not in his room, so she runs out. Then goes to the, the playground. And from there on, it's just the theatrical ending, you know. Which, I, yeah, I'll just briefly say for, for those who haven't watched the movie recently. You know, she, she gets into the park. She yells, to, you know, she, she runs up to the, some kids. Have you seen Sam? Have you seen Sam? She runs around yelling Sam. And suddenly she hears Sam yell out, here I am, mom, or something. And, you know, she, you know they, they go over to each other. And he's like, do we have to go? Can I, can I play a little more? She hugs him hard. He says, you're... You're, hold, you're hugging me too hard. And, you know, she's like, sorry. And I I think he says something like, can I play here until 5.30 or something? And she says, yes. Then he she goes over to, uh, to, to Ash, who's sitting on the swing, just like he was the first time we saw him, except now he's happy. And, you know, the, the two of them talk about how, you know, the kids don't seem to want them around or something like that. I'm not even sure we see... Now, we probably do see uh, Lauren in the alternate ending. I definitely remember seeing her in the theatrical. And, let's see. And, yeah, you know, it's the, the, let's see. You know, Ash seems to remember, ah, what's it called? 
Ash remembers that they've met before. He he recognizes that she is the mother of Telly. <laughs> the mother of Sam. But he doesn't remember the events of the movie. But yeah, the alternate ending is actually 9 minutes and 20 seconds out of the overall that I mentioned. And yeah, then there's a bit where Telly and Ash kiss in bed. He makes her laugh. Lance Roach looks at them in bed, tries to work up the nerds such as the threesome, and then walks off. That was, yeah, actually, I guess those were the only ones. Now, that brings us to the final section. Criticize MBB and Wikipedia. So, I have a bunch of stuff noted, so I'm just going to scroll through and only get into the stuff that I really badly want to get into. A lot of good things have been said in reviews and video blurbs. I think I'm pretty much going to just... Okay, I'm going to see if I have something very specific that I want to get into, but I have been recording for a while, and you know, I also, also recorded like an hour talking about Falcon and the Winter Soldier today, so it is a while by now. So yeah, there are seven taglines that you can look up on IMDb. You'll never forget the ones you love. What if everything you've experienced, everything you've known, never happened? On Sept September 24th, everything you've experienced, everything you've known, never happened. Remember, on September 24th, you will be forgotten. Nothing can prepare you. And then someone, for some reason, wrote out in German and in the English translation, the, you know, yeah, what if you, everything you've ever experienced, everything you know has never happened. I don't know why they bothered writing, because it shows up as two different things when it's the same tagline as, anyway. Nicole Kidman was originally attached to Star, considering her work in Invasion, The Invasion. I think she would have done a great job here. 100%. And I guess that is pretty much everything I have to say about that. I, I'm i not sure she's considered as great of an actress as Julianne Moore, so it does kind of sound like more of a Nicole Kidman movie than a Julianne Moore movie. And Zach Penn did uncredited revisions on the script. Zach Penn. He was one of the people who did who wrote some of the X-Men movies, if I recall. So, yeah, that could be a good thing, could be a bad thing. Someone pointed out in, in trivia, even though the word abduction is mentioned a couple of times in the movie, the word alien is never spoken. Because aliens are Voldemort. Oh, crap, sorry. When, yeah, and this is, uh, let's see, this is one of the goofs, and, you know, as I've said before, I try not to get in arguments with the goofs section on IMDb, but a couple of times I do. This one I, I agree with, I just wanted to shine a light on it. This is listed as a character error. I feel like it is more of a plot point. Anyway. When Telly confronts Elliot about Sam, Elliot acts like she has no idea what Telly is talking about whatsoever. This makes no sense. Even if her memory of Sam was erased by the aliens, as Telly's closest friend, she would, like everyone else, have been given false memories of Telly's delusions about the miscarriage and react accordingly. It's very true. I, and, and it would have been very easy to just write that scene anyway. And let's see. Yeah, so this is listed as a plot hole. Telly manages to encounter her husband again after disappearing with Ash, 
yet he doesn't seem to remember her at all. This is an issue that is never addressed in the film again. In fact, this, never, this character is never seen again after the sequence. I don't personally agree that that makes it a plot hole. I agree that it makes it bad writing. They should have had the, the you know, but a plot hole is, I, I would say for, for something to be a plot hole, it has to be something where you basically have to ignore that something is there. You know, I, I get, you know, you could call the plot hole and that it's, that that part of the plot wasn't written and so it's a hole, but anyway, the, the, let's see. And... Yeah, and this other one is also listed as plot hole. After the aliens attempt to make Tilly forget herself fail, he is taken and everything is returned to normal in which the kids have returned to the world along with Ashwell after he was taken and Pope was taken as well and yet her fate is left unknown. So again, excuse me, I don't agree with that definition of the term plot hole, but I don't really like telling people what is and isn't a plot hole because someone on YouTube demanded that people ascribe to his definition of plot hole and it really irked people, including myself. I'm not a fan of that video. So, but, but, yeah, you know, I would say the, the, you know, I, I would say it's a plot hole that the aliens have immense power, but also seemingly no power, you know, the, they can't prevent them from finding the, the flight, uh, what's it called? The, the, yeah, the, the place where the, the flight, yeah, airplane company building. Anyway, and this is, this is the, the, the goof listed at the very bottom of the, the goofs section. It's listed as a spoiler. Crew or equipment visible. In the alternate ending, when Telly is in the doorway struggling to get to her son in his bedroom, you can clearly see the wire attached to her waist that is pulling her back. Did you think you could escape the IMDb goof section by changing the ending and only putting the alternate one on the DVD or something? The IMDb goof section sees everything, knows everything. You cannot escape the gaze of the IMDb goof section. Now, let's see. And, yeah, so this is, this is from the connections section where the yeah watch mojo had uh yeah they they have a this is number seven listed as they're listening on the top 10 exact moments movies got bad this movie was bad way before this moment but anyway yeah they're listening so it's it's the first uh, you know it's the first guy that gets sucked up into the sky let's see You know what? Maybe the way to do it would be the, to make it impossible for anyone to see. Like the moment that it starts to happen, like the the yeah, like let's say that you you basically do the the cone of the the yeah, cynic cyn, cylinder, you know yeah, cone of of light that that pulls the person up, but. It's blinding light, you know, so, so like, you know, they're, they're standing there, they're trying to talk to, to, you know, Al Pataris, and like, suddenly they hear this loud, uh, yeah, loud whining noise, and, you know, and they, they try to figure out it's coming from above, so they look up, and suddenly, like, a, a whole you know the something starts cutting through the 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 roof of of the little house they're in and this cone of light you know slowly goes down covering him and he's like screaming it's painful and once the the cone touches the ground then slowly the cone moves up and they can't see al anymore but they can see the light moving away and he's not where he's he used to be and maybe once it starts moving away, it starts moving really fast or something. But anyway, yeah, so what they said in the, in the Watch Mojo video, 
let's talk about the way these aliens abduct people. They just... Oh, it's not the same. It, yeah, so, you know, ring them up into the sky, leaving a big hole in the building they were staying in. Who's going to clean up that mess? Who's going to clean that mess up? This isn't a psychological thriller. It's a Monty Python routine, and then they show the bit from the Holy Grail where, you know, the, yeah, I think they specifically show the, the old man getting yanked into the pit. And, let's see, yeah, and, and another one of them is, it's the, it's number 15 on Watch Mojo's top 20 worst endings of all time. And they end this segment by saying, E.T., go home. I really wish they'd added, you're drunk. That would have been, but it is also, it is already funny. I'm not, it's, it's funny. Instead of E.T., phone home, it's E.T., go home. And I'll just very briefly, that reminds me that in, the you know nostalgic critics video on the last action hero sorry last action hero he makes the joke et phone loyal so yeah on on the you know i i tend to look up what watch mojo videos have you know on i'm to be the connection section makes that easy which which Watch Mojo videos mention the, the movie that I'm reviewing? Watch Mojo has six, and of the six, four of them have worst in the title, and one of them is worst of all time. One has got bad in the title, and the sixth is about how no one even remembers that it dominated the box office, which it is kind of sad that this movie did well at the box office, but that's the thing, you know, before bad word of mouth could spread, they, like I said, the trailer's decent. The the both the teaser and the trailer do a, a fine job of yeah. And the yeah, the IMDB facts section says who sucked them into the sky? More than likely they were sucked up by extraterrestrial beings, though it is never said. Like people got it. They were just like the movies usually say, you know, and it, it I don't know why they were playing so coy. Like no one's going to watch the movie. Like, it's not like someone's going to watch the movie and then at the end it says it was aliens. And they're like throwing their popcorn away in disgust, you know, getting furious at just, you can say it. It's fine. We know what it is, you know. And, yeah, so, yeah, so this is, this brings me to the IMDb user reviews. And... I copied in the 100 most useful, the, the, yeah, the 100, the 100 that were voted most useful out of the 458 total, and I am just going to see if I can find, yeah, so the, let's see. There's one reviewer who straight up says, you know, get the DVD, watch the alternate ending, and 155 out of 212 people found that review useful. And he says that the alternate ending makes the movie good. And there's another one who says the alternate ending saves the story, and 46 out of 59 found it helpful. Nah, let's see. Heh. Plan 90 from Outer Space. I believe, Scully. Half good, half bad, but he gave it a 1 out of 10. So I guess the, the bad overwhelmed. And yeah, and this person gave it a 6 out of 10 and wrote 7 out of 10 with the alternate ending. And 25 out of 36 were useful. And yeah, some people make comparisons between this and, uh, you know, it, it's. There's a there's another movie that some people compare this to, and I can't compare this to that without spoiling that. Let's see. The 
exact opposite of the village and just as bad. Something best forgotten. Forget about watching The Forgotten. The Forgotten, soon to be on Lifetime for Women? Stinker. This film was pretty bad. Disgusted. Aptly titled. That's what this movie deserves to be. To be forgotten. How did this screenplay get produced? Such a little critic group. Boy. So. Wow. Forget it. Very disappointing. The Forgotten equals Forgettable. Should be retitled Forget About It. Easily Forgotten. Title says it all. Awfully Bad. A movie to end all movies. The Death of Writing in the Film Industry. Yeah. I found at least one user review. Excuse me. I'm just very briefly going to try to summarize they basically made the argument that like the re the reason for the name telly parada is that she's parroting what she's seen on television and i think what you know what he writes i don't really agree with the you know what what they write there but I do agree, if that's true, then the movie is much better written than I have given it credit for. I don't like telling people that they're reading too much into things. So I'm not going to... I'm just... I don't know that I personally see it. But, you know, maybe I can't see it. Maybe I'm the one looking wrong at it. Okay, now... I went to the IMDb, you know... Yeah, the, the section, the IMDb section for this movie went and, and to the, the, yeah, the external reviews section, there were 176 links in total, and I was able to copy in 56 of them. The rest of them are dead links, languages that don't speak, that sort of thing. So, I read, let's see, I'm just going to if I can find ones that are especially, yeah, I'm, j I'm just going to skim and see if there's anything that, because it's, I guess the, so yeah, I, I did not watch this movie in theaters. I didn't watch a lot of movies in theaters back then. I think after 2003, I took a break from the theater. I, I don't remember for sure, but I think it was around then. And I'm not saying that the reason I took a break was because of how bad Terminator 3 was or how disappointed I was in the Matrix sequels. Although I'm not saying that they're not completely without positive qualities, but you know, I, I made videos talking about the good and the bad of the Matrix sequels. But you know, I, th I think it was basically coincidental. I think there was just a while where I didn't really see trailers that made me want to watch. But let's see. Sitting through the thriller of the Forgotten, it's hard for a critic not to compose the pithy quote, The Forgotten is forgettable. It's always a plus when movies write their own reviews. Let's see, I... So I Yeah. 
that, yeah, that was everything. I scrolled, I skimmed everything that I had noted to, to read. So, yeah, I have basically, let's see, I, I tried to fix, I, t I gave some pitches for how to fix the movie. I talked about my various issues with the movie. I suddenly realized that this sounds like I'm Dr. Jordan breeding, summing up the end of a Your Brain on Crack video, and decided that I was going to stop doing that. So, I hope you enjoyed watching. Believe it or not, I did enjoy watching, and I definitely enjoyed recording, and I'll catch you next time.